There are quite a few different types of 3D printers on the market right now, but the three most common are probably FDM, SLA, and SLS. FDM is probably one of the most popular 3D printers out there, and this one melts its building material and prints layer by layer, which is typically PLA or ABS. Then there is SLA, which is a bit reminiscent of the T1000 formation, but it's pretty common now and it basically uses a laser or a light to cure the liquid resin into a hardened material. Now SLA has a really high resolution and it's accurate, but it typically has very limited volumes. Then there's also selective laser melting, which uses a high power laser to literally slice its way through a material. Most metal and alloy prints stem from this process. The most advanced variant of this would likely be electron beam melting, which enacts in a vacuum. Now there are a few other processes out there, but companies are mainly focusing on these three forms of printing techniques. And quite a few impressive printers have emerged. So let's take a look at some of the most incredible machines built so far. At number 7, the Kraken Hybrid. A really neat 4-in-1 machine combines resin extrusion, metal deposition, cutting and finishing. It can print polyurethane at 120 kilograms per hour and aluminum at 15 kilograms per hour. So you could basically build your next car with this machine in just a few hours. It's actually capable of producing 20 meter parts at 0.1 millimeter accuracy. So it is a very large machine. Naturally, quite a few aerospace and automotive companies have shown a lot of interest in the machine, but no sky high price has been set just yet. At number six, the nylon carbon 3D printer. This is definitely one machine to have in your shop, but it's pretty expensive at $5,000. Now carbon fiber filament is nothing really new in the 3D printing world, but this MakerBot printer can produce parts with a tensile strength of around 110 MPa, which is roughly three times more than ABS. And the material also has a heat deflection of 184 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 100 degrees more than ABS. So in the end, you can replace some metal parts, but it's definitely not going to replace your whole machine shop. That's number five, the Metal X. Utilizing atomic diffusion out of manufacturing, the Metal X is one of the smaller printers in its category. Similar to FDM, the Metal X deposits layers of metal powder into a plastic matrix. The printed parts are then washed and sintered in the accompanying machines. It can print a variety of metal alloy filaments, including tool steel but the printer and post-processing machines cost over $160,000. So it's not exactly at the consumer level just yet. At number four, the Up Nano. Now there are a few different micro 3D printers out there and Up Nano adds to this elite list. It's based on a two photon polymerization process and it prints volumes ranging from 100 to 1000 cubic micrometers in just a few minutes. It does this by using a high powered laser and continuously smart scanning the printed surface. The laser lens can also be changed out so that it can print objects in the millimeter size, but this takes considerably longer. Roughly 8 hours for an object 15 millimeters in size, while an object several hundred micrometers in size only takes about 20 minutes. Ultimately in the end it can print anything from micro needles to springs, and it will have a very diverse field. That's number three, and yes, we have another bioprinter, which is from EFPL. Researchers have developed an extremely fast optical method, which takes less than 30 seconds from start to finish to print an object. It has a precision of around 80 micrometers, and it can also work with soft materials such as hydrogels, so eventually it can build objects such as tissues, organs, hearing aids, and even mouth guards. The process can also be utilized to develop cell scaffolds in which cells develop in a pressure-free 3D environment. The researchers have already tested 3D printed arteries using this technique, so hopefully it can be used in the biomedical world in the future. Ultimately, this machine is highly accurate and extremely fast. At number 2, the Laser Pro Fusion. Well, I know I'm a big gullible when it comes to things in development, but this 3D printer is just crazy. Now supposedly, it uses 1 million laser diodes to melt and create plastic parts. It will only take 9 seconds to build a part within its 500 by 300 millimeter print bed at a micrometer scale. So this would obviously change how we even look at 3D printers, and it's going to be interesting to see the end product next year. The only downside is, is that it's not a replicator, and it will not make you a cup of tea. That's number 1, the Aero Gel Printer. Every now and then, we get a new type of 3D printed material, which shows that there are really no limits to this type of technology. Aerogel is very light, 
and it's an excellent insulator. So EPA researchers have succeeded in 3D printing aerogel at 0.1 mm accuracy. With this new method, it is possible to adjust the flow and solidification of the silica ink so that the aerogel is self-supporting and wafer-thin membranes can be printed. There will be quite a few breakthroughs in electronics and sensors with this fabrication technique. One example of this would be to actually shield a voltage controller on a circuit board with a custom-made aerogel shield or build a permeation pump without any moving parts, which utilizes heat on one end and cold at the other. I'll definitely try to follow up on this 3D printer, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Once again, thanks for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel for more 3D printer news.